Uh, my name is Asib Ahmad. I am the Pikeville Senior Student Senator. With me, I have Campbell Daher. And uh, I know what you're thinking, but we did not plan to match today. <laughs> that we both showed up school, and it's pretty funny. Uh, OK, uh, before we get started with the wonderful presentations here, all the presentations need to be at least 10 minutes. And we don't really like telling you guys to stop talking, because it's hard for us to tell you that. Like, it's very intimidating. And <laughs> uh, so, and also the mic. Uh, even if you have a loud voice, I know some of you guys do. But the mic is unnecessary for the recording, so please use that. And with that, we'll do our first presentation from Allen, Century, Allen Elementary ACT team. The title of their project is Activating Catalytic Transformation, Engaging to Higher Performance. Is there a clicker? Yeah, Thank you. Click. Who's going to click? I will click us to infinity email. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you for uh, coming to our session this afternoon. My name is Rachel Kreider, and I'm the principal of Allen Elementary School in Floyd County. And we had the amazing opportunity this year to be in ACT school with uh, KVEC. And through that work, we've been able to engage our students to higher performance. So that's our, our motto, and that's the title of our presentation today. Click. Who's got the clicker? Okay, okay, there you go. When I pause, it's click. All right, uh, we, uh, we evolved all stakeholders in our school, and uh, this is our ACT team, but every uh, teacher at Allen Elementary School is engaged in this work. Uh, they're very familiar with it, and they're making changes in their classroom to improve. Our team is myself. I'm the principal. We have our assistant principal, Tiffany Lanning. Tiff, you want to throw your hand up? Uh, we have Talala Kidd, which is our teacher lead. We have Miss Jerry Turner. She didn't wear green and black, but I told her she couldn't stand up because she didn't have green and black on. But <laughs> But, and now she's mad. Uh, but she is our community, uh, our community person, and uh, we have Miss Melissa Turner, assistant principal. So that is our team, but we are all actively engaged in the work. This is our plan, our theory of action that we devised at the beginning of the school. And we did this through data analysis, including all of our stakeholders. We looked at where we were, and we had uh, conversations about where we needed to go as a school. We're a high-performing school, but we still had some students scoring in the novice and apprentice category. So what can we do? When we looked at our data, a lot of things came to mind. And then we thought about instruction and what quality instruction looks like. And we all kind of agreed that we needed to focus on student engagement. Um, I believe that we all agree that students that are engaged actively in their own learning process learn more. So we really went after engagement of every child at our school. Um, at the top it says teachers who are involved in a systematic professional development around a uh, national board body of knowledge. We've actually bridged this work with uh, uh, the national uh, professional teaching board work, NT3, so we've kind of bridged this work with that focusing on student engagement, um, specifically with student engagement, will authenticate, uh, and when we increase that, that uh, higher student achievement will occur. So this is our plan, and we've actually given everyone a brochure, and uh, our plan is on the brochure. Um, so many things have come our way for this work. I, I can't express to you the, the opportunities that we've been given this year to grow as a school. One of the, And that's what the team is going to be talking about. Everything that we're talking about is something that we've taken away from the ACT work that we've implemented in our school we've grown from. And one of those is a developed principal cadre. Uh, Ms. Lanning, myself, and Ms. Turner uh, had an opportunity to travel around our region. Uh, we visited Flat Gap Elementary, Louisa East Elementary, and Fallsburg Elementary. And we did visits there. And we would get together as a cadre and we would talk about our schools. They would share their theory of action with us and things and that they were doing and then we would have an opportunity to talk to them. So the networking opportunity has been amazing and we know when we network and we get out there and we talk with other professionals, what's working at your school? Then you're, you know, I can take that back to Allen and of course grow our school. So one of the things was our principal cadre uh, and another thing, now we're going to get into some of the trainings and the rest of the team are going to talk to you about trainings that we've done and that we've brought back all focused around student engagement. So at this time, I'm going to announce Ms. Talala Kidd and she's going to talk to you about QFT. Okay, so as Rachel, you okay? <laughs> Sorry. As Ms. Kreider said, our focus was student engagement. Um, so me as a teacher, of course, the first thing I said, if our focus is going to be student engagement. We need to define what is student engagement. What do we think student engagement is? Because it's maybe different to other people. But for me, um, of course, the norms 
all students working when you walk into my classroom, students working in groups, students discussing and explaining, but more importantly, I wanted to take it to another level, and that was students engaged in instruction and the planning of instruction, and for people to be able to see that when they came in my classroom. So um, during the ACT workshops, a lot of their focus was on questioning and learning maps. So I took those things and wanted to take them back to my classroom with the things that we were already doing in the classroom and to try to increase their, our student engagement. So one of the things that we were already doing in our classroom was QFT. A lot of you are probably familiar with QFT, um, question formulation technique where students take the closed end questions, make them into open end questions. Um, this is a great way for students to be engaged making those questions in the classroom, but also um, it helps students to explain when they have those open end questions and we definitely need students to explain nowadays. It's like pulling teeth sometimes. We're like, give me more, give me more, right? Um, but I wanted to take that to another level, like I said, with the planning of the instruction also in the classroom. So what I've been doing is having students, I'll go over like the standards for the week, what we're going to be doing, our ICANN statements, having students come up with the essential questions, those essential questions that we have to put on our lesson plans every week, right? So they actually have been coming up and planning with those essential questions for us and we post them in the classroom for them to see. The other thing was learning maps. Um, during one of the workshops, they gave us a um, sorry, okay. they gave us an example of high impact instruction learning map for us as teachers to look at. Um, so I thought, okay, how am I going to take this back to my classroom at, for my students and to increase engagement, which is what we were focusing on. So one of the actual legs of the graphic organizer in the learning map was about um, increasing instruction through students' uh, engagement and in instruction. So what I did was I just made a smaller version. I thought, okay, I can make these smaller versions of a learning map for my students. And this is an example of one that I have on my board actually for the past two weeks was text features. So I put the skill in the center and then I kind of divided it up into three different short areas for the students so, it is, uh, so the students understand it. Uh, one being a knowledge which is like our accessing prior knowledge, note taking, defining, listing. The other area, identifying and explaining, uh, and then evaluating and cr creating, which is all of our levels of learning, divided into the different levels of learning. Um, this is a good graphic organizer to put on the, wall, on the wall for students to see, for us to see, and make sure we're on, on, tack, on track, sorry, and for students, and also as well as when your observers come in the room, they know exactly what level of learning that you were on during that time. So the students also, I put this up at the beginning of the week in, in the different areas and they helped me to plan the activities. I'll let them know, okay, this is where we, where we are now, this is where we have to go, and they help it, uh, to plan the activities for that week. But that's all. Thank you. All right, so, um, Back to what she was saying about the learning maps, uh, the, the training that we went to, to to get the learning maps was high impact instruction. And it basically excellent instruction every day in every classroom for every student. And, and what this does is builds um, community building, um, instruction, looking at learning maps, looking at uh, formative assessment, and, and combining all these strategies so that kids can get the best. They can get the best instruction and they can bring, bring everything to the table that they have and you provide them every opportunity to have that engaging instruction. Um, one of the things that we've shared in PLCs that, that is, has been wonderful, and it's, it's fairly new for our teachers, so we, we're, still, we're still learning, we're still going with it, and we have plenty other um, checklists to add in there, but we're, we've, we've shown them these instruction checklists that we got from the training. And basically, it's things that they're already doing in their classrooms, but it breaks it down into a specific step-by-step -step checklist that they can use so that everything goes a little smoother, and, and, and no steps are missed, and those kids are, are learning, and they're really, the kids know exactly what to do. And some of our teachers even talked about posting those checklists on the wall so students can see it and students can, can know what they're doing and they're well aware. And that's all I've got. So t here's Tiffany. A minute 32. I could do this in 30 seconds. So um, I'm the one that doesn't like to talk. So um, 
the another thing that we participate in actively is uh, pedal visits. And how many of you have been on a pedal visit or had a pedal, vi pedal visit to your school? Uh, you'll notice that with our pedal visits, if you participate or if you've had one at your school, it is very positive centered and positive focused. It's not one of those moments that we're going in to see what does the teacher need to improve on. When you're participating in the pedal visit, we're going and we're looking at a problem of practice, which was our student engagement. So when we have um, the team come to our school, when they try travel from classroom to classroom, they're looking at those different student engagement strategies. And um, I've participated in one and I'm going in and I'm, I'm talking and observing teachers and writing down, you know, looking at their problem of practice, but the best takeaway of a pedal visit is what you can come and bring back to your own school. So, uh, you know, I highly uh, recommend that you talk to your administrators and get active with that program. And the pictures on this, if I could just add to a little bit, the pictures, that's from actually a pedal visit that we participated in and that's flexible. And that is an engagement strategy that we're bringing back to Allen Elementary School next year. We've got some of it, but we're really, we're really going to look at our classrooms and analyze them and say, hey, how can we bring more student-friendly environment to? So we're going to be looking at lots of different, and those are some pictures that we got from those visits. That's okay. <laughs> I can I talk really fast. I just have a couple of slides. Um, I'm Jerry Turner, the Family Resource Coordinator at the school. And when I was asked to be the uh, community engagement coach, I thought, well, you know, that's, that's a good fit. I'm, I'm glad I was asked to do that and was glad to do it because the nature of one job complements the go of the other. Okay. Slide. Who's doing that? Okay. Um, the ICT training for our community coaches has better equipped us to gather more school community contacts. We have a survey that we're sending home and to the businesses and stuff so that we can get their contact information for the future. Uh, it also assists parents in asking good questions at parent conferences. The QFT training taught us how to sit down with parents and teach them how to ask the right questions when you're at a school. Because a lot of times they're intimidated and don't know what kind of questions to ask. So that was a good experience. Also, we had poverty training. And it kind of just gave us a reminder of uh, poverty issues and had us think to ourselves, you know, could we live in those conditions? And it's just a reminder that, you know, we're there as a resource center to help in those uh, issues as well. Um, and that's, that led me to do a project that I just started on at school. Is uh, I first got the um, information of, I asked the teachers to give me a list of every student in their classroom that is living with grandparents and not parents. Now, I haven't tallied those up yet because I just looked at them before I came. I have five submitted so far, but one list has six of them on it. One list has four students on it. Um, what I'm going to do is once they're identified is I'm going to form a uh, grandparent support group that's going to be meeting on a regular basis. And I'll find topics to help them out. You know, I'll meet with them and see what questions they might have. But that's a project that I have uh, coming up. And the last um, one was training on how to tell our story. How to use things uh, to tell our story of what we're doing at our school. And we, we just had that training, so I don't have much to tell you what, about what ours is going to be. But I've already told you about the current projects at uh, Allen, and just glad to be a community coach. Uh, thank you so much for your time and attention. A uh, question that you may have is we've shared a lot of things that we're doing. How are we analyzing that data? How are we going to see of all this implementation, how is it going to work? We're in the process of doing that. We're using several different sources of information. Our district walkthrough, component 11 is student engagement. So we're running uh, facts on that. You know, has it improved from the beginning of the year? We're also using student benchmark testing. Of course, we're going to use our state testing in the spring, and we're using formative and summative assessments turned in by teachers. So we're form we're bringing in a lot of data to see if all of these things are working and all pointers are pointing to higher engagement, higher success. Thank you.